Hey, so welcome SIA members and guests. My name is Emily Chorba, and I'm beginning my second quarter as the president of SIA, of the association. And is anyone new to the association? I know Kate is, but anybody hands? A couple? Okay, cool. So normally our first quarter membership meeting is held uh, at the Mediterranean Sports Bar. And does everyone know where that is? Yes. And if, yeah, <laughs> good, good, Ryan. Yes, it's across from Marianne's Ice Cream and also next to Manuel's. So that's usually a standing room only event. And so it just shows how much people like to gather, um, especially when there's maybe a beer or two involved. So I am looking forward to next year when we can actually gather in person and do these um, other in-person SIA events. So our winner newsletter was published 10 days ago, and I hope you all had a chance to read it. Our <laughs> contributors did a great job. Um, our board members write and Zach writes, and it contains articles on environmental programs, composting, getting potholes fixed. Um, I want to point that out because I've had a lot of, we've gotten a lot of feedback on potholes. So um, it, it's up to us. It's up to us to get the potholes fixed, and there's a art the article in the newsletter tells you how to do that. Um, it also has articles on maintaining the select sea cliff trails and gardens, and so most of you know there's two trails, uh, the Beachgate Trail, which is on the north side of sea cliff, and then there's the Moosehead Trail that's on the south side that goes down to the Cafe Rio Beach. Um, we have neighborhood contact information. It also lists our board members, and it also lists our 2020 treasurer's report, and it also has an informative article about the Sea Cliff Village Park on McGregor, um, which was written by Kate Minot, who is our um, second district commissioner for Santa Cruz County Parks and Recreation. So tonight though, our speakers have a few things to share. And if you have questions, uh, please type them in the chat box. And if you want to speak or ask your question to the person, then you can use the raise hand feature. So you're gonna have to find that um, on your own. Uh, so, and then we'll ask you to unmute yourself to ask your question. But um, I do wanna um, let our presenters get into their presentation before you start asking too many questions because they might be answered in the presentation. You never know. So our first speaker is Jeff Gaffney and he's director of Santa Cruz County Parks and he'll present on the Seacliff Village Park. And working with him is Kate Paveo from County Park Friends who is, she's also a Seacliff resident. So thank you both so much for agreeing to meet and present tonight. So Jeff, I am ready to put the things if you want to talk first and then I can put things up as you okay. need. It'll, yeah, it'll be just one minute and then I'll have you put, put them up and, and thank you again for having me tonight. I'm, I'm so glad I'm able to, to connect with you even though it's virtually. Hopefully soon it will be less than virtual and more real seeing each other uh, as day by day it gets better and better for all of us I think, I hope, um, fingers crossed. Um, so I think uh, to just make the best use of everyone's time, I, I wanted to, uh, and first of all, um, also wanted to talk about Kate and her role as far as uh, we connected um, yesterday and talked about it. And, and really, I think if you have questions after I'm done talking or um, have questions for County Park Friends in general, um, that's more of what uh, we saw her role being here and um, she's more than happy to also recruit people to be part of the organization I'm sure I'm sure you recruited her to be a member of your organization yes um, but they've been an incredible support of ours and done great things for us and uh, that's a whole nother meeting probably to just have that discussion um, but what I wanted to go over was the Seacliff Village Park and where we are now, where we've come from, I think is important to mention. And so now with that's kind of my cue to Emily. Okay. Um, for, for those that don't know, um, there's a couple of uh, documents and one of which will be sort of that planning document. Um, there'll awesome. be, okay. there you go. Um, I will get it. I'll no bring worries. It up. So I think it's interesting to note that uh, originally, and some people on this call may be aware of that, that Seacliff Village Park uh, as a parcel was originally going to be a bed and breakfast. 
Um, and so that was a lot of the thinking is that it would be a good place for accommodations um, of some sort. And over the course of time, it went through different evolutions where it was going to fully be a park for a larger parcel. And um, I know I'm repeating history for some folks and eventually uh, came to be half um, affordable housing and half as a park, um, which is where we are. So I just was- Does gonna... everybody hear, I'm sorry, does everybody hear that dinging? I'm, am I stuck? I can't seem to move that. Um... I'm sorry, Jeff. Wow. No, no, no worries at all. It, it's not, a, it, yeah, uh, if you, if we there can we see go. you're trying to. Yeah, we can see you're trying. <laughs> I'm trying and it's not, wow. This is why I had you handle the technical aspect because we'd be here and all I'm, night. I'm, I'm, the, was... I'm the technocrat and I'm- You need to hit alt tab to get to that screen. I'll try that. Oh, there you go. Okay, so are you seeing that now? No. Not yet. Wow. So something maybe min maybe min minimize it. I see. I'm getting the 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 dinging. Okay. I hate the dinging. I get something the dinging is off. open and I can't. <laughs> Can you minimize something? I'm trying. I, you know, it's it's up? one of those. I have no idea what that. It's okay. it's okay. You know, it's it's fine. I, I no problem at all. And if you you bring it up, it's fine too. Um, what I, I just wanted to illustrate was the evolution that's occurred for everybody um, who hasn't necessarily been as engaged about the process um, that it went through. And um, the other thing I wanted uh, from the, the, di the graphics that we were gonna put up, which are not anything spectacular at all, uh, just to the process that took place and, and some of the ideas that were out there for the park and then what eventually was approved as the master plan uh, final version for the park. Um, so that's helpful, and the reason I wanted that was I just wanted to get some some minds working on what might be in the future, what could be, um, because we do have to live within what was approved by the Board of Supervisors, of course, um, and I think this is looking really good. We could do a PowerPoint, too. Uh, <laughs> oh, I can't believe, I don't know what, I don't have that many things open. Okay, anyway. No, I don't worry about it. Adobe, Adobe's been fun lately. That's for sure. They've been very challenging. I don't know. They maybe have we been. Oh my <laughs> God. I can't, I can't move anything. I can um, But uh, so originally, um, as I said, a bed and breakfast became a park and then the park had things like basketball courts and a picnic, a reservable picnic area and a bocce ball court. And eventually it was settled on to do the skate area and the playground and an open turf area and an amphitheater um, and and then some drought tolerant landscaping which is kind of where we are now and um, you know again uh, oh look at that there we go yeah we're so, getting some of it right. but it's not it's that's good we're close I think that's that's pretty awesome no it's half can and you... half okay go ahead <laughs> uh, can you, can you... Can you scroll through that to get to one video? No, so I'm going to turn oh. off my video and my okay. sound. <laughs> uh, I'm so glad it's not me. I want you to know that, Emily, right now. I am so glad it's not me. <laughs> Compassionate guy. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, thank you for taking this on, by the way, Emily, because it was going to be me at one point. <laughs> um, the half you can see of the concept plan was originally drawn up after it was decided that it would be half affordable housing and half park. Um, and so you can see little components of where it was a basketball court and, and some of the other things. And so it's just helpful to understand what people were thinking and how we got to where we are now. And you can see the lower half is eventually kind of where we landed, where there, there's activities on the right hand side, which was a skate park um, component and basketball and then a, a a turf area which got turned into the playground because they took away the community gardens, which you can't see on here, um, and a bocce ball court, and a couple other things like that. Um, so yeah, that oh, was interesting. <laughs> um, oh, she just yeah, she just unshared her screen. I think she's going to try and share it again. And I am sorry about the glare. Um, oh, look at that. No. I think I think we're doing better. Um, so, uh, fortunately, we were able to get the playground and the skate feature done as a result of 
outside forces and money that came via grants and or donations. And then during the donation process, the, the county park friends were able to step up and grab some more donations, which um, they are moving towards completing some of the landscaping and uh, doing some of the finish work on uh, the pathways that are go through there as well. Um, and they're gonna use up the amount, the donations that they have to finish those the one outstanding feature will be the amphitheater. Um, but I wanted to more get the sort of thought process going for the group here to see if there was other ideas that you had that live within the, the general I and mean, the master plan that was approved in 2009. So from a CEQA standpoint, um, that is what we have to live by to some degree as much as possible. Um, we do have some flexibility for operational planning and and some of the day-to-day -day stuff so if we're not talking about you know adding a um, any kind of um, landing zone for spacecraft or anything like that we should be okay um, but ultimately if anybody on the call here has ideas or questions or thoughts there we go that's just leave it there and we're good so this is what we live by from a policy standpoint and from um, the the reality of the law um, so here is, you know, it, and it's funny that we say that and you look at it and it's like, wow, okay, cartoon characters is what we're living by, but um, really uh, the concept of this plan is what we're trying to, uh, going to try to stick to. Um, Jeff, so, can I ask you a, a quick question? Sure. Can yeah. you explain to people about the CEQA situation? Oh, yeah. Sorry, I, I don't mean to be, a, I don't mean to be a bureaucrat. No, it's okay. Uh, the, <laughs> the California Environmental Quality Act, which is uh, CEQA, is um, a process for which the community is engaged and uh, everyone for that matter on any kind of public project, any kind of public project at all that has anything to do with uh, public dollars being used. Um, and so this was one of those. And so this was that evolution that I talked about where originally maybe the developer thought, hey, it's really great to do this. Um, and then as part of that CEQA process that they're mandated to do with the county, um, as well as the county parks department, this was the eventual community process that came to be approved by the Board of Supervisors. Um, and that's required by law. So any changes to this document would have to go back to the Board of Supervisors and are quite um, difficult to do because there's just a lot of analysis and, and money that would have to be spent to do that analysis. So um, I don't like always putting that um, sort of parameter on everyone to, to say, oh yeah, you know, you're stuck with this, but um, there are a lot of tweaks that we can do. Um, just if thought, there's thoughts about improvements or changes, um, this is again, more of an, a large 30,000 foot view for the concept of what it should look like. So I feel like um, I'm talking a lot of bureaucracy right now, so um, I hope I'm not putting people to sleep already, um, but I want to put it out there for questions or thoughts or comments. That's what I really wanted to, to get from this group because um, you've been so engaged with this throughout the process. There's probably people that have been here from day one with us um, that probably have better history than I do actually. Anybody that wants to chime in with that, feel free. If you want to speak, you could just unmute yourself. Okay, Jeff, this is Will Roblin. I'll just go ahead if I may. I don't hear anybody yes. else jumping in. Um, and I may be one of those people who was here with the sort of the beginning. Anyway, I'm very curious about the amphitheater. Having done a little theater, uh, can you be a little clearer on uh, the timeline and the design parameters or anything? Yeah, absolutely. Um, this would be a great project to be able to do and um, any design parameters would definitely be something we would bring to a group like this as well as the rest of the community, but we, we would definitely reach out to you in the beginning. Uh, the problem with the amphitheater is um, cost. It is um, conservatively anywhere between, you know, $250,000, $300,000 to do a very minimal amphitheater um, and to do something a little bit more complex, which in my mind isn't that complex, would be, um, you know, five, dollars $600,000. And so we are looking at large dollars to get that done. That, that's a, a grant that we don't have 
access to at this point. There's nothing out there that we've seen that would make sense for this component. Um, but um, it's just, it's sad. Um, and, and so we're in a difficult place right now. Here, here we are looking at the next step and, and I can't really tell you when it might happen or when the opportunity might be there, but um, I'm, I'm open to suggestions. Um, we don't have the money and, and we're not going to anytime soon, that's for sure. Well, that's pretty clear. Yeah, unfortunately. Dave. Dave. <laughs> I know it seems kind of stupid, but I, I don't see the skate park in there. I mean, the skate park is in this plan here, isn't it? It's there. Yeah. Yeah, it's on the right-hand side. It's that liver-shaped thing in the upper right corner. <laughs> yeah. It does, but it's, like, it's bigger now, Dave. It's a little bit, it's right here, and but it's a, it's a lot bigger. bigger. And the bathroom got tweaked over, so we took the bathroom away from where it is there. You can see in the upper left that building. There you go. That moved over into the skate park area over to where the purple umbrella is into the right. So we were able, that's, you know, again, because when you get out there and here's where the sewer line is, here where, where the water line is, here's the, you know, this is where, where this works. And, and so that's why some of those types of things get moved. The exigencies. Yeah, the play area became a little bit bigger and the skate area became um, a different footprint than what you see there. The square footage is probably about the same, but the footprint's different for sure. Yeah, yeah. the footprint is like that. Dale, yeah. did you have a question? Just uh, two questions, Jeff. Um, yeah. One is, uh, is the amount of open space been de is defined there uh, for the large areas like the, the tolerant uh, turf area in the middle? Uh, were those part of the restrictions or uh, on what facilities you could in, put into this park? Yeah, um, that was both uh, something that the community wanted um, and also something that uh, was a part of uh, working with Soquel Creek Water District. Um, so it's both. Um, and so that's how we ended up with that component. Um, it would be great to do something a little different for sure. Um, and, you know, there are things out there in the world like artificial turf, but that in this county has not been a popular item with a lot of, uh, a lot of folks. So um, that would be the first thing a lot of people might move towards. Um, I'm just going to suggest that that's something that's possible. I think it's just, just a question because I know there's a slope through there. Uh, I'm just representing input from 13 grandkids who wanted to know why there wasn't a half court basketball court because there's nothing close around here for that kind of purposes. For all of the other good things that are here for kids, which is a skateboard and a playground area. Uh, yeah. So, and I didn't know, I, the second question, so I, there's, there's no option for something like that in that kind of an area, is that correct? Do you need an open space restriction? Yeah. It's, it's not necessarily an open space restriction. It's just that, um, Originally, basketball courts were on this, and they were removed through the community planning process. And, and this is what the Board of Supervisors adopted as a result of the community saying, we don't want basketball courts. And can, so. I'm going to call them Mary next, but I just want to tell you, Dale, that in the community process, the church across the street sort of chimed in that they would be happy to have people come over and play basketball at the church. So I think when we got down to narrowing how many things that, that, that we could afford, we just sort of uh, did that. Okay, I didn't know that was accessible to the Right, public. so I don't know what the current permissions are for that, but I know it's something that they talked about. So. The second thing, uh, the question I had, Jeff, was, so you talked about the amphitheater and maybe the, maybe the cost question there, I don't know, but what else isn't funded uh, for the functions that are here? Well, uh, thanks again to, to County Park Friends. Uh, we've, we've got a lot of these components that will be wrapped up. The pathway, I think, is the one thing that really could be more, um, I, I find it surprising and yet I understand it completely. The pathway could be um, defined a little better and made more of a, a easy to walk circuit uh, for people, although a lot of it's there already. Um, 
there's components to that that could be added to. Um, but Kate, I don't know if you wanted to comment on the things that you guys are going to be funding with the, the donations you receive. Maybe I should, I should offer that up. Go ahead, Kate. Sure. Yeah, I'd be happy to. Um, the, the two things that you should be expecting to see really next are um, some of the, the shade structure that will be put in place over that picnic area. Over there, that's coming in pretty soon. Um, they're just kind of finalizing approval and design right now. And it's really nice. What they've done is they've um, basically created a design that will cover the two tables, the red and the yellow table, I guess there. Um, and it won't interfere with the view, the beautiful ocean view that you get at all. Um, so it was a really smart design that they came up with for, for that structure. Um, and the other thing you're gonna see is some um, trees coming in along the um, skate park area there. And then a little bit, I think, along the picnic area as well, some landscaping going in as well. So those are the things that you should be expecting to see next with the remainder of the fundraising that came in. Um, Mary had a question. Mary, you had your hand up. Yeah, um, I was wondering with the amphitheater um, area, I'm guessing that's the sloped area, is that correct? I haven't looked at it recently, but anyway, yeah. obviously the amphitheater is way too expensive, but could it become sort of a birthday party area? Um, I mean, I can see if, even if it's sloped with rolling, you know, games of rolling down the hill, et cetera, you add a few tables for birthday cake and, um, you know, they don't have to be for everybody, but it just seems like it'd be a nice little sort of separate area. Um, yeah. I, so, I think that's a that's an excellent idea, and as an interim, as an interim use, uh, we can do a lot um, of of unique on the ground um, type of things like that. And so, if you know if that's going to be something that's okay with uh, you know the community and 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 feel we feel is consistent with the use of the park, that is definitely something we could look at for sure. And it it might be nice even if it's a way that you can reserve it, like uh, instead of getting up at four in the morning. Um, yeah. It's just, <laughs> it's just I, I just know as a parent, my kids are way grown, um, but you know, as a parent, the really the only really place to go for a birthday party was Seacliff Beach, which wasn't always the best depending on the weather. Um, this is a little more sheltered and so it might be a nice area. Plus, you could have some time in the playground or skateboarding, and then that would be sort of a home base to come back to that's separate of the other picnickers. Thank you. Yeah, that's a great idea. Thank you. Oh, second little bit. Hey, if I may, hey. I got a second question, Jeff. I'm just very curious about for. I think most of us were a little surprised about the uh, the magnitude of the uh, skate park feature, and 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 I I think it's incredibly uh, uh, forward looking and and uh, certainly attractive to all the all the riders out there. What's do you have a sense of the general community reception to it? Yeah, that's that's very accurate. It has become one of the most popular skate parks in this county, um, and it continues to be very popular, uh, which obviously has a downside to it. So we're we're thoughtful about that and want to be careful. Um, but not only is it it's very thematic, um, it's got an iconic location, and it's well designed um, by a world you know well renowned worldwide designer. So um, yeah, it. it I've only heard positive things um, as, as far as the, the skate park itself being um, appreciated by the people who use it. Um, and then also, of course, I've heard a few negative things with COVID and, and some kids doing some really stupid things that kids do. Yeah, well, the, neither of those are the problem of the skate park. <laughs> True. And, and Will, I, I'll chime in a little bit on this because I think some exactly. things, were, I think some things are, are important to maybe clear up. This uh, document that, that Jeff put in front of you doesn't actually show all the breakdowns of the square footage that the board had actually approved. The square footage on the skate park um, is the size of the current skate park. So 
even though uh, we talk about the footprint being larger because of the drawing, the approved square footage from the Board of Supervisors was the document that I personally handed to the designers to say, you can't go larger than this. And their square footage does not go larger than that. So I think one of the challenges is, and I wasn't a part of the original planning process like so many others were, but this drawing doesn't even actually accurately depict the square footage that was approved by the board. I think it was 2750 or something was the size that may be wrong on that number. But so when you, when you actually measure out what was possible there versus even the way the drawing looks, um, those two things actually comport, meaning the, the square footage and what is actually put there. Uh, to Dale's question, up until COVID, but I haven't had this conversation post COVID, St. John's was allowing the public to use that basketball court. And in fact, they were encouraging it. And Reb uh, Rebley, who uh, was the one, one of the main donors for the skate park, one of the reasons why he funded it was he felt that there needed to be something for the basically 10 to 12 or 10 to 14 year olds, uh, the same age group that he wanted to see cross using the basketball courts uh, for Dale's, I don't know, Dale's, your grandchildren age, but that was sort of the the goal over there. Again, I don't know what they're allowing now during the restrictions, but that was their intent. They, they were allowing that leading all the way up to it. Um, and in regards uh, just to the turf, it would be useful for even me to know, um, because Jeff had sort of laid this out here, to see whether the community would like the idea of some sort of drought tolerant turf, i.e. an artificial turf in there. Um, because it would provide a pretty significant green space for kids to play. And even to Mary's point about parties, I mean, just imagine having a large grass field right there. You wouldn't be able to do it on a, from a maintenance standpoint and a Soquel Creek standpoint, we wouldn't be able to do regular uh, turf there. But even when I go there on a regular basis with my son, he likes to explore that area right there and the little drainage swale. Um, but I would love to be able to also have more area for him to use. And, and, and that seems right now like an underused and, and uh, unfortunate situation. But Dale had asked about the possibility of, of other components and not just the community process, but under what Jeff had mentioned under CEQA, any substantive change from this use uh, would be challengeable. I mean, arguably you just have to go back and modify the whole plan for the thing, which is doable, but quite a process. And even for Mary's question about the amphitheater, Jeff was saying we can do a lot in an interim use. What he's saying is that under California Environmental Quality Act, under California environmental law, there's latitude to modifying these plans if it's an interim use. The challenge is an interim is defined as less than seven years technically, and there's a couple other definitions. But the challenge is that people get used to interim uses, right? And they want that as a permanent use. I mean, that's sort of the, the issue here. So, you, you're not allowed to just change the amphitheater into something else in an interim capacity and then 25 years later that's still in its existence and then you end up taking it away from the community as a result. So uh, just be aware that that's what an interim challenge would be. But I would like to hear, I mean, maybe this isn't the best forum because we, you know, we got to get through the evening, but, but I think that, that if there, there actually are grants for things like artificial turf and there are even artificial turf companies that you can apply for grants to do that so if that's something that people would be interested in, I think just reach out to me or Jeff, if that's a total deal breaker like it's been at some other county parks uh, for some neighborhoods, then it, I think just realistically, it's gonna be a while until we're able to put something in that large area. Yeah, and there's been a lot of city parks that have, have had real success with artificial turf. So I, if there's an appetite for it, I'm happy to, to move down that path. Ha <laughs> ha. So in the meantime, we can all donate. We can go to county Friends of County Park and either become a member or donate because it's tax free, right? So right. if we have a and and if we have a particular passion about something, we can designate our donation to that area, and it would be saved, if you will. Right. So there, yes, you could. And um, County Parks Friends is going to be working on a couple other projects after we finish the this one with with um with the with the shade structure and the landscaping we're going to be moving on some other projects but if there is an interest in in pursuing more projects like that we definitely would be you know open to doing further fundraising we'd be excited about that and there is a membership drive going on right now 
Right. Until April 14th, you can get a little prize, I think. Some prizes. Yeah, for right. sure. Um, and the other thing I want to mention really quickly is that um, St. John's is also starting to use their youth um, program to also, it's going to be, they're developing um, some work crews apparently to start doing some cleanups of the park as well. So that's something that should be starting up as well. So that's pretty it's exciting. Very very exciting and, and thank you again Kate for everything you have done and and you know for both Seacliff and now even with Hidden Beach they really are County Parks Friends really has made a huge difference in the amount of resources they brought to the table and the partnerships are huge the, that's been so amazing it made all the difference so thank you oh that's great yeah and if people have wanted want to follow up with me too about this park I'm happy to be a bridge um, between this organization and the Parks Department and and vice versa getting information about the parks back to this group as well Right, because, you know, we had talked about um, volunteers and helping, and that's not really what the, the SIA does. Um, and so if we, so if people wanted to have children that wanted to help clean or whatever or do, then would you be a good person to a uh, uh, Spock, if you will, a single point of contact? <laughs> I like it. Yes, for sure. For sure. Please. I will. Yes. My email, my phone are always available to anybody who'd like to contact me about, about that park. Okay, so we can encourage that as SIA. So, oh. all right, great. But we, we, we don't want to take that on. So, <laughs> anyway. Are there any more questions then for Jeff or <coughs> Dale? Uh, well, <coughs> excuse me, Zach, Zach just uh, brought up the question that I, I don't know, is the details for the uh, amphitheater design already committed? Uh, that drives that range of costs from you said a hundred to five hundred thousand dollars. I assume that is, it, is this just a is it a grass seating area on a slope with just a stage area? It it definitely is wide open uh, to what you can turn it into. Um, it, I'm I'm bound by the number of square footage, and I'm just taking it off of what we've had done as estimates in the past. Um, I think the most recent estimate was done probably two or three years ago. Um, probably three years ago, and also my experience having dealt with building uh, amphitheaters before, um, been you know as part of the project management team for that, um, and you can do something very simple um, where you bring in um, you know rough sawn uh, redwood uh, posts that are actually trees cut in half and and concrete pillars and you can do something very basic and then how much infrastructure you put in with lighting and electricity and all that kind of thing or you can do something even more basic than that. Um, it's just unfortunately um, the reality is any public works we do it just adds to the price tag. It's so much analysis and, and um, it, it's just incredible how much it costs once you, you make it a public project. Although I'm open to ideas and suggestions if we were to try to do something in-house. And when I say in-house, we might be able to do some very basic things with our staff. Um, so I'm, I'm open to suggestions on that. And probably maybe it's an offline conversation for us if you want to go further down that path. Yeah. I'm going to raise, raise my hand and just make a couple of comments from when the amphitheater was, was idea was introduced. Um, I know as far as the association goes, we used to have a lot of events down at Seacliff State Beach. And uh, when this park was being developed, one of the ideas was to be able to have a place for the community to gather that wasn't at Seacliff State Beach in case it wasn't available because you have to get permits and stuff to rent a Ramada. And so I think the amphitheater idea came from that um, from that potential activity and also a lot of the discussion around the amphitheater was to create seating where people could sit and enjoy the ocean view and and even you know depending on the design I know some of the things people talked about was maybe having embedded chess boards in the seating so that the seating was deep enough so that you could sit and play chess or checkers on an embedded, you know, you could do backgammon and other things. So in other words, they were actually embedded in the seating. Um, so the seating was deep enough so that you could could have that much activity while you're looking out over the ocean. And that was sort of geared towards the, um, towards the adults um, at the park. Because one of the things they talked about is, yes, kids need a playground, but the adults need something 
fun to do too. I'll sit there in our old age and look at the ocean and play backgammon. So, um, and also to be able to have community events where we didn't necessarily need uh, electricity for a speaker or something like that because the amphitheater would be um, easier to It'll hear. It'll be acoustically perfect, right? We won't need it. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, although I have to say, as of late, when I walk over there, that is a really loud intersection, mm -hmm. traffic-wise. Mm -hmm. So, so. I'm, I'm sorry, but so does that mean there is, there is a design that I could get with UGF? No, it's just, you know, that was it. The, you know, there's no, there's no drawings. Dale, to, I think maybe, maybe this, but Dale, maybe to kind of clear it up, when we adopt these plans, they're conceptual. So you get sizes that are general, sort of design concepts that are general, but you don't have anything specific until you go into the actual pre-construction phase. Okay, so I might get back to you on. I, I'm just curious because I'm just, we're currently halfway through building an amphitheater in another facility. Uh, so I'm, and our cost wasn't anywhere near that cost, but I didn't know what the scope of the project was here. Ours is set up for basically seating or viewing for about 300 people to be there. But we, I'm, we weren't doing chess boards or those kind of other things. I don't know what those would cost. And the amphitheater does have lights and sound. Uh, capability uh, going to a, a minimal. So I'm just just was curious if you got if you got a concept, but I can probably get back to you, Jeff. Yeah, that'd be great. I'd be happy to try to work out something that is uh, more cost effective for public resources. Okay, thank you. Yeah. All right. Um, can we move on then? So we'll go on to Zach. Uh, our second district supervisor who's kept us informed through the pandemic with great town halls. Thank you so much, Zach. I, I hope a lot of you had a chance to attend some of the calls. He also contributes to our newsletter every quarter. So, um, and he's great at forwarding us information so that we can then forward it to you. But um, anyway, so Zach, can, go ahead. The floor is yours. Thanks, Emily, and, I, and I'll be mindful of, of where we are in the time. So if you have questions, go ahead and toss it up in the chat or raise your hand so I can get to those maybe more importantly. But very brief update on uh, some of the things going on in our general area. By the way, on a business side, Soul Salad is supposed to open tomorrow, finally. Uh, nice. So I'm excited about that. Only three years later than they'd intended to open, but that's exciting. And there are a couple more businesses that are slated to open in the next month or so in, in the Rancho Del Mar Shopping Center. Um, so some good things are, are at least happening in, in our, our area on that regard. Uh, in regards to affordable housing, the board in the last uh, couple of weeks has uh, approved some things that could make some changes for everybody here. One of them is uh, we're working on the creation of pre-approved accessory dwelling unit plans so that you don't have to uh, deal with, you can, or I should say you deal less with the county planning department in that regard. So if you'd like to build an ADU, you, you could select one of the pre-approved plans and significantly reduce cost and time associated with that. Uh, the board's also in discussions about the creation and allowance of tiny homes, which in, in all intents and purposes are really just 100 square foot ADUs. In some, some regards, maybe they could be mobile. Um, I've raised, uh, while I'm supportive of the concept, I've actually raised some concerns about uh, where these would be cited because under the proposal that was initially proposed, they would be allowed basically anywhere. And, and I had a concern, especially, I mean, thinking about the Seacliff area, the Rio Del Mar area, that you'd have one functionally parked in every driveway. Um, and I just don't see, and you know, people would be running them out. And, and since they are technically uh, mobile, even though they would be on, on temporary foundations, they could come and go over the summer or whatever it may be, you could just see it being problematic in, in, in narrow areas like ours. But in, in, uh, if you read other jurisdictions that have tiny home codes, in theory, they would allow that. They would allow you to you know, pull power from the house and various things like that. So um, I've raised those concerns about the coastal zone. I've raised concerns about uh, lot sizes and setbacks. And the same things that we do for accessory dwelling units, I think, should be done here. Uh, just to ensure that we don't have, I mean, there's a way to provide for affordable housing, especially ADUs and tiny homes and not 
uh, drive up and down the street and, and see every driveway blocked with a hundred square foot tiny home. So uh, the board agreed with those changes and, and so it's gonna go through that additional process. And I don't have an exact uh, construct for you what that's gonna look like yet, but um, it should be something that I think is gonna be better for, it's gonna allow them, but still not have a proliferation in certain zones. Uh, right, because parking's an issue too. There'll be more cars too, so. Right, yeah, that's right. I mean, while they would be required to be completely on your property, it would remove parking from you and therefore you'd be out on the street. Exactly. But, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I'm trying to do something that would improve affordable housing, but not create a, a, a perverse incentive to have people renting a tiny home for 1500 a month for four months during the summer. Um, right. Go. And because you're trying to do this for local residents, you're trying to improve affordable housing. And since they're mobile, there's no way to, I mean, what's, that's not defined as short term anymore if it's more than 30 days. And you can see where there's loopholes in this code that need to be addressed on the front end. And, um, and so that's, that's just what we're working through. So know that there's a, a long discussion about that. So what questions can I, I answer for people in general about Seacliff or the county or anything that uh, may make you happy? And good to see you, Maggie, from Colorado, checking in. <laughs> I don't see anything in the chat. And unless I'm missing something, I don't see anybody with their hand raised. No. Nope. No hands. You all have been very informative. Yeah. Between the town halls and, you know, emails that you forward. Well, let me, let me just close on, on something I think most people care about, which are vaccines and uh, the tier system. Uh, we're currently in the red tier. However, uh, as of today, we uh, have met most of the metrics for the orange tier. In fact, one of the metrics were even in the yellow tier. So, but you're required to be in a tier for a certain amount of time. So we will be moving into the orange tier absent some strange change in, in, uh, within the next two weeks. Uh, which opens up even more, which is both exciting and terrifying uh, because we've been down this road before, but I do hope that it's substantively different now because of the amount of vaccines. Uh, to put in perspective, we've vaccinated uh, about 75% of those 75 and older, about 68% of those 65 and older, and about 30% of the county in general. So those numbers are pretty impressive. Uh, based on our per capita, we're um, in the top four in the state for vaccines and per capita, and we're number one for counties of our size in the 250 and above range per capita. Uh, so we're doing, we're doing a good job. It's still a, a fundamental question of, of supply. As you probably know, there was a pretty significant expansion by the state of those who were eligible effective yesterday, or technically today, but you could start registering yesterday uh, if you have a question about eligibility, you can always drop me an email, but um, most people are pretty are, are eligible right now. I mean, be, most people fit into these categories. So if, you're, if you haven't been vaccinated, I, I would consider reaching out to your provider. Uh, most of them have online, uh, they'll have a little questionnaire and you can see whether you qualify, but public safety, disaster service workers, transit workers, food, which is very broadly defined from everything from a grocery store clerk to an ag worker, um, those that are pregnant. I mean, there's, there's a lot of qualifications now. So, so uh, please do, we want everybody to get vaccinated because that's what's gonna really shift the trajectory. Um, looking at the list, I'm pretty far away still. So uh, I'm gonna be staying away from all of you for a <laughs> while, uh, only because I'm not vaccinated, not because any other reason, obviously. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I'm a while off, but that, I'm just excited that so many people around are, are getting it. But are there any questions about those two issues? Awesome. Well, Emily, I'll, I'll hand it back to you then. Okay, great. Thanks, All right. Thank you. Thank you. Great. So now let's deal with everybody's favorite topic, the bylaws. Um, I hope... <laughs> I know. <laughs> now everybody's going to log off. So um, let me do my screen one. So... We did, if what we'd like to do is, did everybody get a chance to review them? And could we get, um, can we get some approvals on them? Like if to approve, can you give the thumbs up? Or to reject, you can do the open mouth on your uh, reactions. The way you do that is you go to the more, there's, there's your little bar across there. You can go to more and there's chat and reactions. 
and reactions, you can do a, I'm doing a thumbs up. So if, if everybody likes those and, but I did have a couple of last minute changes, but it, it only makes it even better. Um, lat, section two dealt with um, classes of membership. And you can see this is quite long, but we switched it to just classes of membership. There shall be but one class of membership with equal voting rights, period. So I think we made that one an easier one to approve. And then the other one was section three that, excuse me, I'm trying to get this on. Section three that deals with household memberships um, about husband and wife partnerships just being what we decided to streamline it to say is a membership is defined as a Seacliff household residence, business or property owner. So instead of having all this other definition, um, husband and wife, a partnership, a family, this, that, it's just a household. So we think that's easier to approve too. So with those last, those two last minute changes, because someone brought it up, um, I saw a few. Can, can we do thumbs up again? Because we needed to have our and then Rebecca, we're, we're recording this, so I'm going to give a reaction of a thumbs up. I see a lot. One, two. I'm, I'm not finding all this stuff, but I'll just put my thumb up on the screen. Oh, yeah. Thumb up is fine on the screen, but people who aren't showing their, their faces, so. Yeah, the way you thumbs up on your, um, if you go to participants and find yourself, actually at the bottom of the particip participant list, uh, there should be something that says yes, no, and then there's a more. Or, one. yeah, in the chat, you can just put I agree, like Kelly Dillon did. You can yeah. just, um, I approve or whatever. So and that, there's a, that's another. And there's a reaction. You can give a thumbs up in that. So that's great because these, in case you didn't know, they're from 1948. So they have some traditional <laughs> language in there. And so we're trying to bring it up to, you know, the way we talk. The 21st century. Oh, that's great. Will, Terry, that's great. Yeah, the 21st century. So, all right, great. So I think we, I think we have enough. I see Greg's got a green check. Joanna's got a, great. All right. Thanks, everyone. So finally, I just want to close out with our membership meetings and events. Um, I don't know what's going to happen. I mean, Zach had great news <laughs> that we're going to possibly orange or yellow. Um, but typically what we've done is our second quarter membership meeting is an ice cream social at Seacliff Village Park. And then we also march a banner in the July 4th parade. And everybody, any member is welcome to join us. Um, it's a front row seat. So you get to see all the action, but you, there is a lot of waiting around too to, to uh, start walking. Then we also do the Seacliff Beautification Awards. Then our third quarter membership meeting is, uh, uh, we're not sure, we sort of, it's, we in, invent one every, every year. There's, we did a stroll to Aptos Village uh, before, so it just it kind of depends what the key issue is. And then finally, our fourth quarter membership meeting has typically been a dinner, but of course we couldn't do that last year. And we're not sure, again, what we'll do, but um, those are some of our gatherings. So, um, you know, and we will continue to send email announcements um, of our various events. I hope we don't overload you with emails, um, but uh, please don't unsubscribe because <laughs> then, then if there's something really important, you won't get it. So, um, and again, we're not sure when we're going to be able to do these in, in person, but I just wanted you to know what those are and what to look for. So with that, I'm, I think I can close the meeting now and I thank you guys for your attention and, um, and for calling in and Hey, it's not even seven o'clock yet. Emily, Emily, before you, I just saw on the news and I, I think it was our state parks Tomorrow for St. Patrick's Day, they're going to be a bunch of gold stones. So if you've got little ones, uh, you might want to watch the news to make sure it's going to happen in our little Seacliff Park. But oh, it's really? Sort of, yeah. So as I say, I, I saw it. 
I just tried to find it online. I can't, but um, maybe there's that Kate, do you know anything about it? Yes, yeah, so they're in all the county parks. Every county park has them. Um, I was at an Aptos Village park today and there were quite a few kids there collecting them already. So there probably aren't any left there, but all the county parks should have them. So Seacliff should have them too, right? They should Seacliff have Village County Park. Yeah. We are a okay. county park. I cool. just thought you'd like to, I just thought I'd mention that because I thought that was kind of cool. Yeah. That is cool. Pot of gold at the end of the uh, rainbow. We might not get our, our rainbow until Thursday though. So we'll, when it rains again, but all right, cool. All right, well, we can call it a wrap for our first quarter meeting. Thanks everybody. And Kate, nice to meet you. All right, folks. Ciao. Good job, Emily. Thank you so much. You bet.